Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today on the Word Podcast. We continue our examination through the letter that James wrote. And remember what's going on in the first chapter here, that he wrote uh, to the folks who had been dispersed abroad from the 12 tribes. So these were believers with Jewish background. And he said this to them from the get-go. He said, count it all joy. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet, when you encounter various trials. Well, why is that? Well, first of all, we see that we're going to have trials, but we are in charge of how we react and how we respond to that. He says, know this, that such trials are a testing of your faith, and that this testing will bring forth endurance. It'll bring steadfastness, and that endurance and that steadfastness will bring you to the point where you're complete, lacking in nothing. And there's, an, uh, yes, an immediate picture of this, but there's a bigger, bigger picture of this. It's that of pressing on into maturity. And that being completed into maturity. And we're really not completed in maturity in the Lord until we see him face to face. Okay, when he takes us out of this body. And then he told him, remember, if you lack wisdom, ask God. But don't ask doubting. If you ask God doubting, then you're just double minded in the way that you're thinking. Okay. And then he said, don't think that anybody is being tempted by God because God doesn't tempt. But each one of us, when the temptation comes that the enemy sins, if you play with it, if you're enticed by that lust, then it's going to conceive something. It's going to birth forth sin. And when that sin is accomplished, it's going to bring death. So he told them, don't be deceived by this stuff. The good things, every perfect gift comes from the Father above. But then he tells us, and you notice he's just giving instructions here how to live the life. He says, all of us as believers, and he calls them beloved brethren again, must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For what? <laughs> yeah, the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. So then he tells us, <coughs> excuse me, he tells us to set aside all filthiness, wickedness, and really walk in humility and prove yourself doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. Uh, you know, as then today is the same situation where people will sit there and profess all sorts of things by the word. And they'll say, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I believe that, I believe that, I believe that. But they don't live it out. And he gives an example of it. He says, like the man who looks in the mirror when he walks away, forgets what he looks like. In other words, the word has been reflective and has revealed to you what you need to address and what you need to do. But you ignore it. And he says, you need to be an effectual doer and an effectual hearer, too. Okay, hear and do. Then verse 26, if anyone thinks himself to be religious and yet does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is worthless. So if you think that you're religious, you think that you're right, but you don't bridle your tongue and you use your tongue in the detrimental type of way, and James is going to say some more things about the tongue, then that, quote, religion, unquote, is worthless. And then he tells us this. Verse 27 is really intriguing. Pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father is this to visit orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. As I mentioned in the previous episode, all too often the pendulum swings too far <laughs> both ways. Okay. You'll have people that will profess the right thing and will say the right thing, but you see nothing of true religion in them. And you see back body and you see a very tart tongue. You don't see this right here of ministering to the orphans and the widows, those in distress, and then doing this, the hardest thing, keeping oneself unstained by the world. But then you'll see people who do all sorts of religious activities, and they do good things for mankind, okay? And they say, and they do all these great things, but they do not believe. They might even be religious, okay? They might be religious, and yet they are not saved. And so, yeah, they do the good thing of visiting the orphans and widows in their distress. But the keeping oneself unstained by the world, <laughs> that can only come about in and through a right relationship with the Most High God. Now, it, it, in the Western world, particularly in the United States today, this has gotten all perverted in so many different ways. 
you'll have people who are very religious and they're wanting to do uh, good deeds. They're wanting to take care of the poor, which we're supposed to. They want to feed the poor. They want to help. Absolutely. But they want to do it through governmental agencies. And they think it's the role of the church to, to force other people in society to do the things that we see in the scripture. And boy, you talk about a perversion of things. No, it is the role and the responsibility of the believer of the body of Christ to do the things you see in scripture. It's not my role and responsibility to get the people who are unbelievers and to mandate and force and control and make people do things governmentally that will align with the scripture. Now, I think our man-made governments should be in line with the scripture. I'm not saying that, okay? But what I'm saying is that there is a perversion that's come about, and you see it particularly with, uh, within uh, liberal realms of Christianity. And if, if you don't agree with a particular stance of somebody politically, and they believe that you're supposed to feed and help hunger and house, then they think that you're questioning their Christianity. In other words, it has been melded together, it's been blended together. It's been stained by the world. And what he tells us right here is to keep yourself unstained by the world. Now, he starts to give some more insight and some more hints in uh, a hints to us as to exactly what that may be. And we're not going to get into it right now. I thought we might. But the next chapter, chapter 2, in verse 1, he starts talking about a situation. Okay, and we'll look at that at the next episode right there. But it's something that we face on a regular basis. In the meantime, remember what he said here. Keep yourself unstained from the world. Okay, do what pure undefiled religion is in the sight of God to visit the orphans and widows in distress. One last thought. What is it that's pure and undefiled about that type of religion? It's the fact that that you're helping people that will not be able to help you immediately. In other words, there's nothing, quote, that you can gain, unquote, by it. There's not an agenda afoot to visit the orphans and the widows, to help them when they are in distress. If we do this, we're doing it from a pure heart. It's also not necessarily just that instance, uh, that instance, type of thing. It's the thing that the Lord has called us to do. What is the motivation of our heart okay again i'm dale thank you so much for your time uh as always uh, go to my webpage and you can see all the daily blogs there you can see the daily podcast you can see the bible studies we do locally and online as well as back times of all those bible studies there's dozens if not hundreds of them there and uh, you can also find a link a patreon link uh to where you can help support these times if the lord moves upon your heart to do so thank you so much i'll see you then goodbye